My deliverer from angry nations, you set me above my assailants. You saved me from the violent man, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Fabiola Jardine, Bartolome L. Barrientos, Gerarda Barrientos, and those laid to rest in our Catholic cemeteries, and also for the intentions of Olga Ruiz. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children sanctified by penance, and in your kindness grant those you stir to a sense of devotion, a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire, and who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary, and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. The young men walked around in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace and made the inside of the furnace as though a moist wind were whistling through it. The fire did not touch them at all and caused them no pain or distress. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly he said to his counselors, Was it not three men that, were that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our ancestors, and blessed is your glorious and holy name. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy 
of your holy glory and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne on the cherubim. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven to be sung and glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, We are not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Perhaps modern man's most treasured value is his freedom. And since the 1960s at least, there is maybe nothing else that so unites us in the West, especially though not exclusively, as the search for and the affirmation of freedom freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of association, religious freedom, free love, political freedom. There is one thing that can motivate all of our energy and all of our resolve. It is this search for freedom. And of course, we know also that this rallying cry of freedom is also easily manipulated by cynical actors. They can convince us to do what they want in the name of freedom, especially if we are not clear about what exactly freedom is. The Jews in today's gospel affirm to Jesus, we are free, we have never been slaves. And yet Jesus reminds them that if they were truly free, they would not be trying to kill him. They are, in other words, being manipulated in the name of an illusory freedom. So if we do not want to be manipulated, we have to know what freedom is, what freedom means, and what freedom is for. So you can ask yourself, when am I free? We are free, I'll suggest, when we are able to satisfy our deepest, truest desires. And I think we all know in some way what that freedom feels like. For example, when you're in love, and your beloved reciprocates your interest, you feel free. You click your heels together in the street. You feel like you're walking on a cloud. You're free as a bird. Someone in that moment could take everything else away from you, reduce you to misery, to poverty, and it would scarcely bother you because you are in love with someone who loves you back, and that love makes you free. On the other hand, you might have everything in the world that a person could want. You could have a well-paying and very interesting job, a good family, strong friendships, 
living in a peaceful and prosperous country. But in that case, if you are missing the one thing that you truly and deeply desire, you are not free. When that deepest desire is satisfied, it means that the rest is icing on the cake. And that freedom for us who have encountered the Lord comes from the recognition of faith. The recognition that we make in faith that God for us is everything. That he has loved us and we have loved him back. That was the faith that made the three youths of the first reading radically, amazingly free in front of the self-styled God Emperor of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Because they knew that apart from God, there was nothing on earth that they truly needed. The king could threaten them with the most dreadful punishment in the world, and it would not have bothered them. Faith made them free. Lent for us is a time to acquire that freedom, to yearn for that freedom and to beg the Lord to grant us that freedom. The Lord says in the gospel today, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. In other words, whoever thinks that the satisfaction of their heart, of their deepest desire, can be found in things outside of God, outside of Jesus himself, is a slave. If you think that you can fill the bottomless abyss of your heart with wealth, with power, with esteem, with pleasure, then you are a slave. Not only will those things never actually work to satisfy you, but you will also do anything to keep them, even to the point of crucifying the Lord of glory in order to hold on to them. Instead, it is the truth of faith that makes us free. When we recognize that the truth is in Jesus, then we are free from every external circumstance. Let us beg the Lord then that we might see him again at work in our lives, that we might recognize him, that we might love him, and that we might then be free. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heaven. Excuse me. 
Receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased, to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, 
a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. God has brought us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, 
and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. Attend, Almighty God, to the prayers of your people, and as you endow them with confident hope in your compassion, let them feel as ever the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.